Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's uh, question comes to us from Mike McMullen. He's K7MHM. And uh, he asks this. He says um, he's New Ham uh, and has been uh, working with UHF and VHF D Star DMR and Fusion. And um, he says, looking back on my installation of the antennas, um, I'm now questioning how I ran the coax cables. Now, this is the key point. I used standard length made up cables and have excess to maybe 10 or 20 feet just tied down to my downspout. Okay. After watching how to make your own size, I bought the kit you suggested so I could shorten them if needed. Okay. If it is 10 to 20 feet coax, should I worry about the unneeded excess? Actually, no. Uh, along with the excess, I attached all three coax cables virtually on top of each other with no separation. That's not an issue with coax. That would be an issue if you had open wire line. Okay. Along with the excess, attached all three coax cables virtually on top of you. We read that. Should I be making some distance between each coax cable? No, you don't have to. How much would be appropriate? Put them right next to each other. Okay, so his question really has to do with this. Uh, if you are a, a new ham, maybe, maybe a ham, been a ham for a long time, and you really don't like putting uh, PL259s or end connectors or whatever, on your cable, you can buy cables pre-made in any length. Now, let me show you one issue that comes up with that. Okay, we'll look down here at the blackboard and use uh, black first. Okay, this is a wall. And you've got a cable that's got a length and a pin sticking out and a cable coming out the end of it here that has a, a certain width okay if you are using a um, using one of these pre-built cables note that to go through the wall this is the size of hole that you need you've got to be able to get the connector through the wall now, if you're just using the cable by itself, you can put a smaller hole in the wall and then pull the cable in, put the connector on the end of it, and you have a smaller hole. Now, what is the problem with making these holes larger? Well, you need to fill them in. A mouse can get through an area the size of a dime. A lousy little old dime and you figure that the coax connectors are bigger than that uh, if you make that hole bigger you're going to have to seal it somehow okay uh, now there are lots of ways of doing this you can get wall throughs you can get all kinds of things and put that thing through a lot of people find that they just don't want to have to deal with putting ends on coax cable and so they buy pre-bought lengths and you can buy jumpers too. Now, they're a little expensive because they have cables or um, they have connectors already attached. The most common connector by far is the PL259, um, which is very common in, in America. The end connector is real common in Europe. The end connector is technically the better connector in the sense that Sony Betamax was better than VHS. However, for the same reasons, because VHS had already grabbed the market, the PL259s have already grabbed the market in the United States and, and 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 I know some of you are going to disagree with this but the end connector in general unless you're working UHF or microwave 
the end connector isn't enough better than the PL259 to make the switch. Now another type of connector that is common, the BNC, um, is used for uh, low power. Okay, And I would not recommend making uh, antenna length runs in a fixed installation with BNC. Uh, go with the PL259 because they can handle a great deal more uh, power. Okay, so um, I think this attempts to answer the one question. Um, do you want to put cables on? You've got a problem with the wall through here. If you put your own through and you have to drill a hole in the wall, it can be just a quarter inch or something for um, RG8X or it's 0.405 inches for uh, RG213 or LMR400 or RG8. Okay, and then the cable fills the hole. And when the cable fills the hole, the mice don't get in. We have a problem here with mice in the fall when it starts to get cold outside and the mice want someplace warm. And so they try to come into the house and they'll use any excuse to get into the house. Okay, so now the, the next question has to do with the excess length. Yeah, long cables come in like multiples of 5 feet, 20, 25, 30, 35, and you can specify the length in advance. Now, I would warn you that uh, when you're going to specify the length of your first cable, take a piece of string and run that piece of string exactly the same way you will run the cable so that it's got the distance from the ground up to the antenna, it's got the distance along the ground, it's got the distance under the house, coming up into your room, coming up onto the, the table, having enough so that you can pull the thing out and so on. And then add five feet, okay? And that's the cable length to order as a minimum. Now, if you're working with HF and you have extra cable length, don't worry about it. Just coil it up. Shove it somewhere. Uh, you can coil it. He says he has it uh, coiled onto his mast. You can do anything like that that you want. Now, VHF and UHF, it starts to get to be a different story. Um, if you have a typical mobile radio, which has 50 watts out, you really only need about 10 at the antenna. And so that's not so much a problem. The problem is the attenuation of the signal coming from the antenna back down to the radio. So for two meters uh, and uh, 70 centimeters, I would say use uh, RG213, LMR400, something like that. However, I have an admission to make. I don't. I don't. I use just plain old RG8X and it works just fine. Okay, with the PL259 connectors. Technically, the PL259 runs out of juice by the time you get up to 70 centimeters. But you'll find that all the radios, the mobile radios, that will do 2 meters and 70 centimeters have a single SO239, which is the opposite half of the uh, PL259 uh, on them. Uh, yes, you lose a little bit in the coax, but the question is, can you achieve communications with other hams? And the answer is absolutely yes, you certainly can. Uh, if it's a marginal situation, now let's say you're doing something like moon bounce. Well, if you're doing moon bounce, uh, the, the channel loss on that up and back is like 250 some odd dB. It's just ridiculous. So you have to transmit with a lot of power, which usually means a very high gain antenna. And then you have to be able to receive. And this is why people use things like uh, JT65, JT9, um, and so on for uh, moon bounce because they're extremely sensitive. But if you're just doing FM communications um, and you've got an antenna on the roof, it takes about 10 watts to hit the horizon, if that. So uh, these 50-watt, 80-watt radios are 
uh, they've got that extra power in there uh, as marketing overkill. I actually recommend against it and recommend running the middle 25 watts uh, because when you do too many watts, you're going to blast other people off the air, and we don't want to, to do that. So I hope that answers your question. Um, no, you don't need to cut those up. Yes, you can if you want to practice, but I would do this. If you're going to put cables on, make a couple jumpers. Uh, get yourself uh, about like three feet of RG8X, okay, and put connectors on each end, and then you have a jumper cable. And that's a handy thing to have. Every time I think I have enough of those, I need another one. So uh, you can make those either crimp connect or solder connect or so on. I saw something on a Bob Heil video about a different way to solder uh, connectors. I'm going to give it a try. Um, he shows the finished product. I'm, I'm going to try showing uh, how to build that in a future video. Okay, so there you have it. We have a, a drawing every month. I'm going to change the rules of the drawing because we screwed up the February drawing so bad. Um, for the February 2022 drawing, I mentioned two different prizes. I will give them both away, okay? The radio first, and then I'll give the little signal gener away, generator away. And I have something new to give away. Somebody at the club gave me this. This is, and I'll put it down here, the Radio Amateur's Handbook for the year 1959. These are published annually. So 1959, let's see, 1960, so 61, 2, 3, 63 years ago, okay, that this was put out. It's a little yellow, not too bad. Um, it's more for curiosity's sake because the technology in here is so out of date. It's like a, it's like a fascinating history novel. And it's got advertising at the back, lots of nice pictures of radios that, that nobody has anymore. So there you go. If you would like to support this channel, please go to decastlercom support and look for Patreon or PayPal or some method in there that works for you. And please subscribe to this channel and click like and share uh, with others. Uh, see if we can get some more Augies. And Augie is someone who has subscribed to this channel. And that's O-G-G-I-E. Until we next meet, 73.